Bronze Age tombs of ancient Greece lined with gold is what archaeologists recently have found. Michael Miller, University of Cincinnati, reports this on phys.org. The gold ring depicts bulls and barley, the first known representation of domestication of animals and agriculture in ancient Greece. Archaeologists with the University of Cincinnati discovered two Bronze Age tombs containing a trove of engraved jewelry and artifacts that promised to unlock secrets about life in ancient Greece. The UC archaeologists announced that the discovery was made Tuesday here in Greece. That's where I live, in Athens. Jack Davis and Sharon Stalker, archaeologists in University of Cincinnati UC's classical department, found the two beehive-shaped tombs in Pylos of Greece. Last year, while investigating the area around the grave of an individual, they have called the, quote, Griffin Warrior, end quote, a Greek man whose final resting place they discovered nearby in 2015. So they're finding a lot of things in that area, you see. Like the Griffin Warrior's tomb, the pricey tombs overlooking the Mediterranean Sea also contained a wealth of cultural artifacts, delicate jewelry that could help historians fill in the gaps in our knowledge of early Greek civilization. UC's team spent more than 18 months excavating and documenting this find. The tombs were littered with flakes of gold leaf that once peppered the walls, papered the walls. So the walls were all uh, you know, gold leaf is very, very thin. We use that in making um, Christian icons. The background is uh, with gold leaf, and what you do, what they do is, I never did it. I used paint, gold, gold paint. I could not work the gold leaf, even though I tried. First of all, it's very expensive getting it. Very expensive, even if it's a mixture of bronze and gold. Very expensive, and you need a special glue. And you have to be careful how you apply the glue on the uh, wood and then put the gold leaf sticking on it. So obviously these flakes came off the walls because the glue was dried up or very old and the gold leaf came off. So um, they papered the walls at one time, they said. And they said, like with the Griffin Warrior grave, by the end of the first week, we knew we had something that was really important, said Stalker, who supervised this excavation. He said, it soon became clear to us that lightning had struck again. Of course, that's a metaphoric, said Davis, head of UC's classical department. The griffin warrior is named for the mythological creature, part eagle, part lion, engraved on ivory plaque in, this to in his tomb, which also contained armor, weaponry, and gold jewelry. Among the priceless objects are art of art was the agate seal stone, depicting mortal combat with such a fine detail that archaeology magazine hailed it as a Bronze Age masterpiece. Now, artifacts found in the pricey tombs tell similar stories about life along the Mediterranean about 2,000, uh, well, 3,500 years ago. That's about the time of the Santorini eruption. That's about the time of Exodus, Moses from Egypt. The gold ring depicts two bulls flanked by sheaves of grain, identified as barley by a paleobotanist who consulted on the project. It's an interesting scene of animal husbandry, cattle mixed with grain production. It's the foundation of agriculture, said Davis. And as far as we know, he said, it's the only representation of grain in the art of Crete or Minoan civilization. Like the grave of the griffin warrior, the two family tombs contained artwork emblazoned with mythological characters. An agate seal stone featured two lion-like creatures called Yeni, Jenny, standing upright on clawed feet. They carry a serving vase and an incense burner, a tribute for the altar before them, featuring a sprouting sapling between horns of consecration, Stalker said. And above the Jenny is the 16-pointed star. The same 16-pointed star also appears on the bronze and gold artifact in the grave, she said. She said, it's rare. There aren't any 16-pointed stars in Mycenaean iconography. The fact that we have two objects with 16 points in two different media, agate and gold, is noteworthy. The genius motif appears 
elsewhere in the East during this time period. She says, one problem is we don't have any writing from the Minoan or Mycenaean times that talk of their religion or explains the importance of the symbols. UC team also found a gold pendant featuring the likeness of the Egyptian goddess Hathor. Davis said its discovery is particularly interesting in light of the role she played in Egypt as protectress of the dead. The identity of the griffin warrior is a matter of speculation. Stalker said the combination of armor, weapons, and jewelry found in its tomb strongly indicate he had military and religious authority, likely as the king known in later Mycenaean times as the Wanax. Likewise, the princely tombs paint a picture of accumulated wealth and status, she said. They contained amber from the Baltic, amethyst from Egypt, imported carnelian and lots of gold. The tombs sit on a scenic vista looking, overlooking the Mediterranean Sea on the port where the palace of Nestor would later rise and fall into ruins. She said, I think these are probably people who were very sophisticated for their time. They have come out of a place in history where there were few luxury items and imported goods. And all of a sudden, at the time of the first Tholos tombs, luxury items appear in Greece. You have this explosion of wealth. People are vying for power. She said, it's the formative years that will give rise to the classic age of Greece. The antiquities provide evidence that coastal Pylos was once an important destination for commerce and trade. If you look at a map, Pylos is a remote area now. You have to cross mountains to get there. Until recently, it hasn't even been on the tourist path. Stalker said, but if you're coming by sea, the location makes more sense. It's on the way to Italy. What we're learning is that it's a much more central and important place on the Bronze Age trade route. The princely tombs sit close to the palace of Nestor, a ruler mentioned in Homer's famous work, The Iliad and the Odyssey, having to do with the Trojan War, remember. The palace was discovered in 1939 by the late UC Classics professor Carl Blegen, and Blegen had wanted to excavate in the 1950s in the field where Davis and Stalker found the new tombs, but could not get permission from the property owner to expand his investigation. The tombs would have to wait years for another UC team to make the startling discovery hidden beneath its grapevines. Literally, these areas have a lot of grapes for winemaking. Now, excavating the site was particularly arduous, with the excavation season looming, delays in procuring the site forced researchers to postpone plans to study the site first with ground-penetrating radar. Instead, Stalker and Davis relied on their experience and intuition to focus on one disturbed area. She said, there were noticeable concentrations of rocks on the surface once we got rid of the vegetation. Those turned out to be the exposed covers of deep tombs, one plunging nearly 15 feet. The tombs were protected from the elements and potential thieves by an estimated 40,000 stones the size of watermelons. The boulders had sat undisturbed for millennia, where they had fallen when the domes of the tombs collapsed. And now, 3,500 years later, UC's team has to remove each stone individually. It was like going back to the Mycenaean period. They had placed them by hand in the walls of the tombs, and we were taking them out by hand, Stalker said. It was a lot of work. At every step of the excavation, the researchers used photogrammetry and digital mapping to document the location and orientation of objects in the tomb. This is especially valuable because of the great number of artifacts that were discovered, Davis said. Quote, we can all see all levels as we excavated them and relate them one to the other in three dimensions, he said. UC's team will continue working at Pilos for at least the next two years while they and other researchers around the world unravel mysteries contained in the artifacts. It has been 50 years since any substantial tombs of this sort have been found at any Bronze Age palatial site. That makes this extraordinary, Davis said. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, 
you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, and Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.